Addie and soldiers. I've been gone for so long that now my cybernetic implants have fully meshed with my body and I have new ink decorating my flesh prison. I was gonna make a video about my new tattoos, but I was also gonna make a video about my chronic pain update, and they have absolutely nothing to do with each other, but there's a vague enough thread that ties them together that I feel like I could just make this one video. So, hello everybody, sit down, get a snack, get a tea. Settle in while we talk about paying an absurd amount of money for ink on my body and then nothing in healthcare, because I live in Canada where it's all free. So first let's talk about tattoos, because I know that's basically what everybody here for anyway. But first, you'll have to sit through a little bit of backstory, unless you want to take initiative and just move the video progress bar a little farther forward. Backstory on my two new tattoos is that in mid-September my family went to Scotland for a couple of weeks and it was an amazing trip and it was, oh man, so cool. I trapezed across multiple castle ruins and gallivanted all over the Scottish countryside. It was wonderful. You can see pictures of that if you follow me on Instagram. Shameless plug, links down below. And seeing as it was a family vacation, my dad and I decided to go get tattooed together. Not matching ones, by the way. Whenever I say we go with that, everyone thinks that we got matching ones. We did not. Although I don't think I would have been too mad if we got matching unicorn tattoos or something. By the way, the unicorn is the actual national animal of Scotland. Look it up. And all of you have seen this one before, but uh, my dad got a Scottish claymore, which is a traditional two-handed sword on his forearm. It looks really dope. And I ended up getting two small ones. So two for the price of one. We both had an amazing artist. Her name's Allison. I'll leave her information down below if you happen to be traveling or live in Edinburgh or something. She was great. The tattoo that I'm most in love with that just solidified my love for her is my beautiful new little Nessie tattoo! Yes, I know, I'm a millennial with a dinosaur tattoo, okay? Sue me. The detail that she did is insane. I mean, look at his little nose. It's so cute. Shading is absolutely beautiful. I love the detail work she did. And now I can say that I have a dinosaur tattoo and it's from Scotland because it's the Loch Ness Monster but it's also a plesiosaur, which is one of my favorite dinosaurs. And you know, Scottish folklore, everything came together. I love it so much. Also a fun fact, because I'm now overly brimming with Scottish fun facts, is that Loch Ness and Inverness, actually in the traditional Gaelic, is pronounced Nish, so I have named him Nishi. The other smaller tattoo I got on my ankle, uh, and this is going to be very difficult to model for you. Gonna try my best. Also, I didn't shave my legs, just precursor. As most of you know, because I won't shut up about it on this book-related channel, is that I love A Dark Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, so I wanted to get some kind of script tattoo that paid homage to that, and she also lives in Edinburgh, so I felt like, you know, there's a connection there. I want to do that. Oh, you can also see my delightful wine socks that my friend got me. On my ankle, I got this beautiful script of... Astrovars! In A Darker Shade of Magic, uh, the main character, Kel, is a blood magician who can travel between dimensions, and one of the rituals that he does before he travels between dimensions is he, like, uses blood to, like, make a symbol and then speaks these words, and Astrovars means to travel. So I feel that, you know, getting a travel tattoo on my ankle from my favorite book in the city where my favorite author lives is just a good all-around tattoo idea. I love it. I think it's really pretty. So the way that I'm tying in my tattoo with my chronic pain update is that a lot of people are like, my tattoos hurt so much, like, aren't you scared? Like, those are a bunch of needles stabbing you and your skin. And I have a redhead, so that means that my pain tolerance is scientifically much lower than everybody else's. Uh, and man, that's very true. I hate needles, I hate hospitals, uh, I've had multiple surgeries, and so many blood draws. But for some reason, getting tattoos, uh, it, it's not as bad, and I think it's because the last couple of years I've had so many procedures that involve needles that it, like, doesn't I mean, it still bothers me, but it doesn't bother me quite as much anymore because I'm ugh, getting used to it. Uh, never wanted myself to say that, but here we are. Because when they take blood or like put an IV in, it's going, oh, I'm so sorry for this visual for all of you, it's going through multiple layers of skin to like get to a vein, but tattoos kind of just hit like the first couple layers. So it doesn't hurt as bad. And even though it does sting or hurt or burn a little bit, it's to me, at least in my own head, it's to create art. So at least I know that there's gonna be a good outcome. Not that, you know, going in for surgery is like not gonna give you a good outcome, but for the most part, you're like, uh. But for tattoos, you're like, oh, this is like a slightly more than uncomfortable stinging sensation and I'm gonna have a rad dinosaur on my arm in like half an hour. You know, it like balances out. I think it's fine. So I went to a foreign country and got some new decorations for my flesh prison. And uh, just the other day, actually when this goes up, it might actually be today, I'm not really sure. I just passed my six month post-op surgery chronic pain day anniversary. I obviously did not think of a better title before I started filming this video. There are videos on my channel that mention it. Uh, I've made a couple videos specifically on it having chronic pain in the last like three-ish years. 
Um, and the reason for that, they finally found out, is that after multiple testing and a ridiculous amount of procedures, uh, they found out that I had rips and weak points in my abdominal wall, so organs were pushing through and kind of ripping or tearing at the internal flesh, which is just a delightful visual for all of you this morning. Believe me, it feels about as good as it sounds. So at the end of April of 2019, I finally finally got a surgery date uh, to get some mesh put in uh, to my body as like a reinforcement uh, to keep all of my organs where they should be more or less. The procedure itself was pretty small. Uh, they only really did one small cut and the mesh that they put in, they said it is about as long as my thumb. So it's not huge, but oh my gosh, did it ever make a huge difference in my life. So now I have a really cool scar that uh, no one is ever going to see because it's low enough that even the smallest bikini will cover it. But you know what? I know it's there, so I feel like more of a badass. And I know I made this joke in the other video, but I have a now small piece of metal inside me, so I'm like a really lame cyborg. Oh, also, fun fact is that um, I traveled a lot in September on planes specifically, and I found out that the mesh is big enough to set off the metal detectors. Uh, yeah, that's real fun when you go through airport security. <laughs> Um, I had to get waved down a lot. So the healing process took a lot longer than I had thought it would. I had a minor surgery last last year and that took like a week to heal and I was like kind of okay but this took me like two weeks before I could fully do anything. I guess because it's more invasive I'm not really sure. And the pain afterward was awful and I was told that it was because all of the nerves were like reconnecting to each other so I had such major like sharp nerve pain all through my abdomen and like down my thigh. It was just it was not fun. But considering that before this procedure there were days that I could hardly walk and I had to sit for hours and hours on end and I ended up like losing a lot of my insurance from work because I didn't work enough hours because I was in so much pain that I physically could not work or lift things or walk for more than like an hour or less at a time. Time, it was so much better once it healed enough for me to actually start doing things. And now, six months later, I can say that it's almost fully healed and oh man, it's so great. My life is so much better. I can like lift things and run and walk and do activities and not have to worry about randomly feeling like I'm getting stabbed in the pelvic region. So yes, it improved so much. However, there's still a little bit of, I call, I call them aftershocks. I got more kind of residual pain um, in the, the months directly after my surgery for a good reason, because you know everything's still knitting up and healing. But even now, it's like five months, six months post-op, it's, uh, it's sometimes not super fun in the morning or in the evening. These aftershocks, as I call them, are in the same area as my mesh and other like smaller, less weak points, and they kind of feel like an ache or sometimes like a like a softer stabbing feeling. And I'm pretty sure this is just because my body is still like trying to, you know, figure itself out after getting something implanted into it. So it's doing okay, but it's, you know, after I do like a lot of activities or if I had a really long day or I walked a lot, um, sometimes it can start to, to ache again. Actually traveling with it was not great. Um, again, that was like five-ish, six months post-op, so I'm sure it'll be much better in the future. But I think the air pressure um, in the plane uh, really disturbed it, so I was very achy when I was in the air. And when you, you have a flight that's like eight hours long, it's not the most fun journey. Like, it's not fun to travel for eight hours on a plane when you don't have chronic pain. So my chronic pain went from like, can't walk, dealing with it every day, taking enough pain medication that it looks like I'm some 20 year old frosh, you know, ruining their liver, to like, able to get out of bed, not uh, joyously or, you know, awake, but like being able to do that without a second thought, uh, being able to work more and, you know, better, and uh, being able to walk actually, and, you know, lift things over like two pounds. So that's great. Big improvement in my life. <laughs> yes, I still get a little bit of pain sometimes, but it is nowhere near the amount that it was before. I also read on a lot of online forums from doctors and just people that have had this kind of surgery is that this surgery does not necessarily guarantee that your pain will go away and chronic pain after this type of surgery is apparently very normal. So that's just great. <laughs> like what did I even go in for? No, that's not right because it is, it's a big improvement. It's just like, ah, uh, really? Ah, uh, so I guess this is something I'm gonna live with for the next who knows how long of my life. So that's been a fun tattoo update and uh, chronic pain, you know, 
go over, so I hope you enjoyed it. Leave any comments or questions or concerns down below. I have no medical answers for you, so go to WebMD or something. I'm sure they'll have the answer. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are, and I will see you all next week. Bye!